is standing by with Mean Gene. Oh. All right, uh, Vince McMahon, Bedlam and Pandemonium. Things in uh, somewhat of a chaotic state oh. here. Hulk Hogan, I'm sure there's going to be a thorough investigation oh. by the World oh. Wrestling Federation oh. into what happened oh. here tonight. And I know you could not be any more disappointed. How much money did they spend on the plastic surgery, man? I had all bases covered. I had the Hulkamaniacs watching. Deep Yossi, I had Virgil in his place. Never in my wildest dreams, me, Gene, would I think that I would get ripped off by a penny pension two-timing referee. How much money on the plastic surgery? How much money did he spend to pay the referee off when I turned around, me, Gene? They were identical. Identical. Hey, oh, right, right here, Holt. Here it Look is. Look at the now. shoulder, brother. That's, Look at the shoulder. That's him. The referee is paid off, brother. Look at the hundred dollar bill falling out of his pocket. I know you're disappointed. Oh, Hulk Hogan, Vince oh, McMahon. Oh, oh, Andre the John and baby oil and blow Hulk Hogan two and Gorilla Monsoon What's the three count gonna be this week? No we'll have a good time then. That's a, like could be an official little thing. We could use that every week. We should yeah. we should record that or something. We could just start dropping that in. And that's uh clarification. That's the ugly kid Joe version. Oh, okay. That's not the Yusuf whatever wait somebody did a cover of that ugly kid joe song no i'm saying no okay yeah good yeah, i don't okay, recognize yeah. it just recognize the ugly kid joe original oh, uh, and your altered weird al-esque cover that you just did which was sure fun. sure but i still hate everything about your sister that's not true she's a nice lady yeah they're they're all good people you got a couple of them or whatever you got some halvesies running around they're good folks i've met them all half breeds don't count if there's anything scott steiner has taught us over the years yeah we don't recognize them no not at all. Small Joe. Hey, uh, it's Baby Oil and Blow again. Uh, I'm the 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 Mad O of the show. Mm -hmm. You are the in honor of WCW hitting that Saturday night whatever on uh, the network. What was their show Saturday night? WCW Saturday night. Yeah, well, that's a clever that's title. What it is. Uh, you're gonna be Stevie Ray to my Booker T. Okay. You are Nate Adams. That sounds good. Ahoy, hoy, fruit booty. Oh, see what you did there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. Well, you, uh, I forget any of his other catchphrases. He had something he called women, like yaks, I think it was. All you yaks out there. That sounds cool. Mm-hmm. Shouting out to you. I don't know why he never made the transition over to the WWF booth. Especially now that they just have his brother, like, doing the same thing he did. Which Not is as well. Which essentially, like jibber jabbering like nonsense into the microphone and not adding to the presentation i mean stevie ray was kind of there originally and he's all but been erased from wrestling history yeah. by his uh his little brother that's gotta whoo that's gotta sting man yeah him and uh what if like uh davy r shyster just started working at the jail and then before you know it you didn't work at the jail anymore and they were like uh, hey we're making this guy head of the jail what if Davey and so he's R like, remember when his brother worked here? And everybody's like, no. What if Davey, break your heart. What if Davey R. Scheister started a successful uh, 90s wrestling podcast oh, without man. ever listening to our 80s wrestling podcast? I could see myself being like, well, I'd probably still support him and yeah. listen to it. Well, you'll probably be on the show. In my heart, I would feel very bad about Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, if he's doing that, I'll be on that show, sure. Yeah. yeah. And then you'll be like, remember when I did this is that be show? A big with... opportunity for me. You'll be like, remember when I did that '80s one with Matt? And he'll be like, mm, No. Yeah. This 90s is this is kind the... of popular now. Yeah, this is the ruthless aggression podcast. Nobody really talks about the '80s anymore. Yeah. This is a uh, painkillers and porn stars. The '90s wrestling oh. podcast. <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? Neck fusions and <laughs> neck fusion surgeries and carrying around unresolved video story game lines. systems on commercial airliners. Yeah, not nearly as fun. It doesn't sound like. Uh, oh, that's uh, that's the current brand of wrestling. 
Uh, Were they doing that in the 90s? Carrying around the game consoles? I think that's kind of when it started. That's when everybody was like, <sighs> oh, that's a shame. we can't do drugs anymore. Yeah. Well, that's more like early 2000s, I think. I'm going to pin that on people like Edge and Christian as being the huh. first generation of like... A couple of dorks. We're like dorky guys. You grew up loving wrestling, and we like video games and stuff. It's Austin. not just like... Hey, I'm some sleazebag drunk guy they yeah. pulled out of a saloon, and now I'm going to be a wrestler, which is, you know, the origins of the business. That's Right, that's how the business started. Where it came from, that's how it thrived. Once you got a bunch of people, it's like reality shows always have one good season, mm-hmm. like those early real worlds, or that first season of uh, The Osbournes, mm. where they didn't really know what was going Sorry. on. Yeah, I was just like, oh, there's cameras Shame! around now. We're going to act insane. That was great, man. We good do stuff. That? Yeah. But then there's a season two, and they're like, Dogs. oh, we figured out that we're a reality show now. Dogs were pissing and shit. So everywhere. we know how to be a reality like show. So <sighs> we're, we're just going to be working towards that instead of just being our natural crazy selves. Hey. That's where we're at with wrestling now. There's no real crazy loons in the ring. It's just nerdy kids who grew up idolizing crazy loons, and it's just been diluted. Thanks for uh, setting me up here. Uh huh. Speaking of uh, wrestling shows and reality shows, you ready for our big uh, current wrestling news story of the week? Oh, no. I was hoping you'd forget about this thing. Yeah, no, I never will, because you hate it so much. Uh, True Love has finally died. Oh, f- John Cena and whichever. They released Mike no. Bennett and Maria Canales No, 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 from- no. no. Pro he got wrestling. traded. He got traded to Monday Night Raw in the big superstar shakeup, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Okay, and remember, well, yeah, I follow the happened. career of Mike Bennett very closely. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know that about me. He's, Everyone knows that about me. He's Mike Kanellis now. Of course, I knew that. Yeah, uh, don't patronize me. John Cena and whichever Bella he was, you know. Come on, let's not be obtuse putting here. The screws to. He was putting the screws to Nikki, the one with the tits. Sure. Yeah. Uh, they they split after yeah. six years. Uh huh. Six years of being together and almost a year of marriage. So, Not even a year of marriage. Well, they, they, Did they even get married? No, they've I don't been know. married. They just got engaged? Yeah. Oh, at at a pro wrestling show. Oh, yeah. They totally would have had the wedding they like did it. on Raw or something. Well, no, it would have been at SummerSlam, so they could have done yeah. a match made in heaven, a match made in hell, too. Elizabeth. And then The Undertaker Elizabeth. and Jake the Snake could crash the reception. Elizabeth. And then... Elizabeth. That's how you propose to a woman. Cena would get bitten on the arm by a King Cobra or something, and it would be awesome. You want to propose to a woman, you get down on one knee in the middle of the ring, and you say her name five times. (laughs) Elizabeth. Elizabeth. I'm just waiting. He was nervous. Is he going to ask me anything? He was nervous, man. Why is he wearing this frilly white outfit? He seems like he's on less cocaine today. I don't know. This isn't his normal. So anyways. Yeah. This is just padding until we get to SummerSlam. They got to have some bumps in the road. Have you never watched a romantic comedy before? Come on. Um, this is where like they're the thinking Amy like, Schumer oh, vehicles. maybe it's not going to work out for us. And then like eventually John Cena has to like go to an airport to stop Nikki Bella from like flying to Argentina to get a really experimental breast surgery to make oh. them like even three times larger than they are now. And he's like... Don't do it. I like your tits as huge and fake as they are right now. I love you for you, and I always have, and I've finally come to realize it. And she then likes like, me for me. Oh, that's great. Let's Not because I lo- and end they play the that song. season of our reality show by embracing, and then our marriage will be at SummerSlam. And then Undertaker just shows up, and he's like, you shouldn't have called me out all those times. Remember when you called me out at wrestling? But he comes back as... Uh, biker taker I, this time I, finally I brought back Jake the Snake if he's gonna be a bad guy he's gotta be biker taker Listen, he's gotta bring back Jake the Snake that's all oh, I'm angling yeah. at you know Liz this, is, this has gotta be a good time this is a party too right I'm gonna save oh, the yeah. woman I'm gonna save the woman <laughs> Well, Hot Rod, uh, it's a good thing the Macho Man is not here because of the guest of uh, Paul Bear. Who's the guest? Let's let Paul Bear tell us. My guest this week is your friend and mine, a man we all can trust, Jake the Snake Roberts. <laughs> all right. 
A man we all can trust. <laughs> yeah, I guess it is lucky. You just saved Jake's life. <laughs> oh, God. Look at that. Jake. Look at the Cobra. Ah. Look at him teasing it on top of it. What a snake. What an idiot. I can't imagine he would do that. Idiot. Cobra turns around and bites him. He's going to be curtains. Just like everyone else. Look at that. Look at yeah. that. Oh, my goodness. Wonder Miss Elizabeth. Oh, Mr. Roberts. I've always had my suspicions about you, but now I realize we've been on the same side all along. <laughs> you know, Paul Bear, life is tough, man. When you head down that long road, you got to make a choice when you get to the fork in that road, whether you go the right way or you go the other way. It's up to you. Well, I made that choice a long time ago. And I went the other way. My way. I can create my own rules. I can live life the way I want to. Now, for those kids that are sitting at home listening to your mother and your father tell you, all you got to do is eat your vitamins and grow up and have children and live happily ever after. It's a lie. It's a lie. I want Nikki Bella to get bitten by a cobra. So you're saying this whole thing is just a buildup to the final return of a cleaned up Jake the Snake Roberts. <laughs> well, I'm putting quotes around cleaned up, but yeah, that's clearly where this is all yeah. going. Wow. God. It's going to be great. I can't wait for it. <sighs> oh, man. Until they get to that wedding reception and Jake sees all that free booze around. And oh, then shit. All bets are off. <laughs> Everybody's scrambling in the back. Where's DDP? Where's his Wrangler? Oh, no. Oh, DDP's showing those underage girls over there how to do downward dog position. He took yeah. his eye off the yeah. ball, man. Bang! Bang! See what I Jake's did already two zemas deep. Oh, There's no boy. coming back from this. He was a wife swapper. DDP? Yeah. Yeah, allegedly. I heard him and Bischoff did a little yeah. uh, trade in action. Yeah. yeah you keep it's things cool. exciting. What did Bischoff have in the offer? Uh, Who is he married he's to? He's got the Mots. What do you got? Uh, Kimberly oh, Page? Yeah. I got the Mots. Yeah. I don't know who the fuck Bischoff was. I just know they were all like fucking strippers and <sighs> tossing their wives around. They lived in Hot Lanta, man. That shit goes out down in Hot Lanta. Wow, I didn't. Wow, I gotta get down there. Haven't you Sounds ever been to wild. Hot Lanta? Just to Hot the, Lanta, uh, man. Just to the new diners they have down there. I keep it classy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> are, are those still around down there? <laughs> we talk about <laughs> those new diners. That's based on uh, well, billboards we saw a good 15 years ago. Let's uh, road trip it, find out, and do our show live from one. Okay. Uh, topless diners, somebody out there bing that for us. If they still exist off the uh, highways of Florida and Georgia, let us know. We'll go down there. We'll do a show from the Shonies oh, that uh, Steiner owns. Man, we could become... We'll do another one from the Topless Diner. Wait, if he's starting diners in Georgia, why the fuck is his place fully topped? Right? Big it... Bad Booty Daddy's got a Shonies and now yeah. one of those Topless Diners? Yeah. I feel like they finally must have shut those down. We could turn our show into some kind of weird hybrid thing where it's like wrestling like mm-hmm. it is, but mm-hmm. then it turns like part Guy Fieri. Yeah. Or maybe we Mostly just... Guy Fieri. Maybe we just get Guy Fieri as the third guy on the show. We just go around to different establishments that uh, wrestlers own. We just do that, the friendly tap that... Uh, Tim White owned. We can go to Abdul the Butcher's barbecue place. Oh, we got really fucking uh, what's her tits and uh, right in our backyard in Chicago. Oh, here. that doesn't exist anymore. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, that went I down thought that in was flames. still there. No, that went down in flames. Oh god, uh, the squared circle Nothing there in Chicago, forever. Illinois. It's that's gone. Unfortunately, uh, when that close, Mort. Shot. I don't know. Sometime in the last year. That's a that's a shame. Well, this week we've uh, got a real humdinger of uh, an episode of wrestling television to talk about. Not only are we talking about a big event, the main events, still, still the highest rated, the highest rated professional wrestling broadcast, professional wrestling of all time, of all time. Most importantly, this motherfucker was only forty nine minutes, so it had like two matches and some change. It got in, it got out. 
I'm going to tell you, I feel good about myself. It was like, yeah, it was like I ate a salad for lunch instead of going to the buffet. After it was done, I was still just like limber. I was moving around. I was like, that was fine. My girlfriend turned. nothing wrong with that. That was fine. My girlfriend turned to me after the show with like. uh, Still disgusted that she has to sit through all this, by the way. Well, yeah, but she had like those Ric Flair tears in her eyes. I guess if she had more things going on in her life, she'd probably leave the room when this was happening. That's mostly on her. She looked at me with those. Get yourself together. She had those Ric Flair tears Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. She's like, why can't they all be like this? That's true. The main events, the velocities, the heats, all the 49-minute wrestling shows. Yeah, maybe let's just change format and start covering those. I've always said that a good hour-long wrestling show, including the commercials, is the best format these things have ever done. Oh, leave them wanting more. That's why all these nerds on the internet are always talking about, like, oh, NXT's so much better than all this stuff. NXT, so... It's because it's only a few minutes, so there's less time to ruin things. You're not bored. Doesn't give them enough rope to hang themselves with. You gotta and, get a few things done and then get out. And you're thinking about how good Heat was when CM Punk was wrestling matches against mm-hmm. uh, Val Venus. Mm-hmm. With Raven on commentary. Yeah. Raven and Jonathan Coachman, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, there was definitely a coach in that Shot period. In the dark. I wanna say it was like. I wanna say it's Grish and Coach. Oh, the Grish. I forgot all about him. Yeah. Has he still got a career somewhere? Probably. Somebody He's probably doing like him up. news in Baltimore. Is he or like a vice news correspondent now? Yeah. He's sending like, uh, vaping in the poppy fields of Afghanistan on the next vice news, the Grish. Vape, 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 vape. vape, vape, vape. vape Lodian. I don't know. Yeah. It just yeah. seemed right, man. Let's get into the rundown. It's a brief rundown. Who's it? It's brought to you by. Uh-huh. Turbo tax. Turbo tax. Because it's, when you need your taxes done quick and you need your you wrestling do done quick. Tax day yeah. has passed at this point, I think, hasn't it? Or well, are we up there? Te- I think it was technically today. Okay, so. But by the time this drops, yeah. You're, you're screwed. Fucked, man. You better get the turbo tax yeah. or Money you know, Inc.'s coming after you. Coming after you. Yeah. Uh the Turbo Tax presents uh the Rock and Stifflers the Rundown. We've got our first match. It's an IC title match. Champion, the Honky Tonk Man, is in there versus his challenger, the former champion, the Macho Man Randy Savage. Never heard of him. Yeah, well, Macho Man makes a name for himself here because he wins the match, but it's by count out. Real up and comer. Oh, uh, Honky Tonk Man retains that title because you can only win a title by pinfall or submission. Did you know that? No. It's a technicality in the oh, rules. Son of a That's bitch. That's why the champion, he's got the advantage. You got to beat the champion. He doesn't have to son beat you. Son of a gun. Next one, we got a world title match. Hulk Hogan, the champion, in there versus Hulk. the challenger. Hulk. The rematch from WrestleMania 3, Andre arr, the Giant. Arr, arr. This time, uh, you, you got to beat the champion, and that's what Andre does, because he pins him, to the, arr, arr, arr. pins him to the mat. One, two, three. I'm under the dirt. There's no controversy. Uh, Andre just pins him. It's just matter of fact. He factly. wins, and then he sells the belt to Ted DiBiase, who ends this show, the new WWF champion. Well, he doesn't really sell the belt. He just delivers goods because they got paid a long time ago, right? Well, that's true, but you He know, paid Heenan. I thought it might have been a cash-on-delivery type thing. Maybe there was a small deposit no. and then he got the second half Heenan was claiming he had that money already. Either way, Heenan's already blown it all at the uh, oh, casino. Oh, yeah. You listen to what Monsoon, Monsoon says? Monsoon was telling yeah. me all about it. Third match, WWF tag titles. We got Strike Force in there versus the Hart Foundation. Oh, they showed him in the ring. Oh, yeah, because uh, they didn't leave enough time for this match to happen, so they just rolled credits right after introducing them in the match. Yeah, yeah. It lasted for a good 20 seconds, and uh, Martel ended up getting the pin, but even then, the pin was happening as they faded to black. They were literally in the ring for like 20 seconds. Somebody fucked up big time. Yeah, but... There was some sort of formatting error. Vince didn't care. Money was made. Mm, so much money in our pockets. Now... We move into the five count, the meat and potatoes of this podcast. This is yeah. where we make our money. This is, where this we is the balls really of the just show. Dig into deep into these things the, and the balls. Analyze it and just show off our insight and our knowledge and the just five impress count everybody out was there. The balls, balls, baby. Yeah. What's, uh, uh, what's your number one here? Mine is hot. Damn, do I love those <clears throat> main event pre-show promos oh yes it's like a a little bit of that ecw pulp fiction type 
promo yeah. thing they would do where you just get a string of guys doing promos while there's a song dropped over the yep. back of it. Good stuff. It sets the mood, man. What's WCW been giving us like snippets of something that happens on the show, which is mm-hmm, an okay mm-hmm. hook. It's weird because it's out of context. You don't really know where it's at. Right. It's like sometimes it's something they're showing you from later. Sometimes it's something from a house show and one of their many satellite promotions. I don't think primetime shows you dick all. They just oh no show that generic package of people wrestling. Mm-hmm. Which is but got a, some, some nice. sax music like it. in it. That's still, nice. But yeah, the, the thing like I like it. the most about these uh, opening Saturday night's main event uh, yeah. promos is the, how everybody gets their own fancy logo, green yeah, screen right? behind them. It's like somebody's it's taking the, the time to design logos for all these guys. And their name real big. That's, that's branding, baby. That's I mean, I get it. Everybody's not a fucking character these days, but like... Give me some logos, man. Yeah, how would you even come up with a logo for half these guys? Oh. They're all just white, skinny white dudes in tights. Oh, man. I'd be racking my brain trying to come up with logos for. I blame for, Frank Miller. Uh, <laughs> comics legend uh, Frank Miller. That's the one. Uh, current uh, successful film director oh. Frank Miller. Film art tour. Toast of Hollywood. Yeah, that's the guy. Writer of uh, Robocop. <laughs> Buy that for a dollar. Sin City 2's Frank Miller. What That's could he possibly have to do with modern he, wrestlers being boring? Grade the lines. Good guys and bad guys, and now they all want to be that. It's very true. I think we've at least made an improvement over the mid 2000s, though, when everybody was coming out in just their plain tights and boots. And, like, also they looked like generic white guys. That's fair. At least now people are doing, like, cool ring coats and shit again. Yeah. Which has been a lost art for a some long color. time. There's Once Austin color. and the NWO popped off and everybody was just yeah. wearing like shirts and tights and that was it. Black and white. Ring coats were gone. Nobody yeah. was wearing fancy robes. Like nobody was putting any money you into have any stuff. other gear. Now these guys, every like, WrestleMania, see? they got these crazy outfits again. I like it. Oh, don't listen to him. Did you see what Macho Man was wearing? It was pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> he had his classic orange and white and yellow, mm-hmm, which mm-hmm. is a, you know, a combination unto itself. Somehow he made it work. And then he had that robe that was that blue. That robe and that headband red combination. And green? Looked good, man. Or like black? That might be the most sequins blue, ever green. used on any outfit. Yeah, it was it was wild. You know, man. Also looks really wild. good around this era. What's that? Macho man's head of hair. Oh yeah. It's like uh, somebody stapled a bunch of candy cane to like yeah. a bald skull. Or it's candy, really like, cotton candy to a really, bald skull, and then it just sort of like floats out there. Well, it's like straightened. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's weird. It goes like straight out and down, but like there's massive. I think he's blow drying it. Balding does patterns. Does, does he have to be blow drying it? Uh no. I'm gonna assume that like Elizabeth hitting it with a flat iron. You know. Oh God bless her, but uh, <laughs> it's but, a little bit misguided. I guess. Yeah, work with the flat iron there. It's something, man. It's, I mean, it's, it's like maybe give it like little squeezes. Get, get like some, some light like styling cream in your hands and then just like maybe ball it up yeah, in your mas- hands a little bit. Some light squeezes. Little, just yeah. Massage it in there. So, that's all yeah. you need to do. This, uh, this hair looks fucking ridiculous. I did find myself wondering like would like Macho have just been like better off just shaving it short and then just growing out the beard a lot? Like would that have been I a mean, better yeah, look? Yeah, he would have looked fucking insane. I mean because he had that great. like skullet porn director tight uh ponytail when he was in wcw there was later really on just something going on in that era him and hogan and none of them wanted to give up on their long on the side skulllets man yeah, it's it like really weird as long as you had a do-rag no one was gonna know it's my like, hair is still long i'm still young and virile like, i look that, good that falls off it, it just falls off just shave your heads man yeah i think shaving your head was like some sort of Sign of being a pussy. I don't know. Back in the eighties, they didn't do it. They would do the comb over. They yeah. do a fucking like hair piece before yeah. they just shave. You the could fucking shave head. your head. If you you're know who pussy. changed all that shit? Fucking Stone our man Cold. Bruno. Bruno. Oh, Bruce yo, Willis. Bruce Willis. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Once he fucking shaved that shit off, post yeah. Die Hard, all those women were like still creaming their jeans. Yeah, and he's men, like, you gotta express yourself. Men were like, hey, wait a minute. I think express you can yourself. You can shave your head and still yeah. be a real stud muffin. Yeah. Come out to the coast. We'll get together. Have a few laughs. He so, gave us all hope. Yeah, we all owe Bruce Willis a debt of gratitude. And we should probably Bruce revisit Willis. that Kevin Smith movie he was in and give it better reviews this time. Which, because 
Kevin Smith and Bruce Willis were not happy with all the bad things you said about that movie, guys. That cop movie? That yeah, didn't... that's the one. That's the, the one. Bad that... cop or good... The, the cop or Listen, something? I don't remember what it was I called. Know. I just remember it. They were very upset cop out. with all the bad things cop said about out. it. That's what it was. Cop Out presents the rundown this week. We, had a, we just had a run-in sponsor. Tracy Morgan. Oh, not even Tracy Morgan could make that movie funny. Bruce Willis, Tracy Morgan, and Kevin Smith present Cop Out presents the run. I can't even. What a bummer. Yeah. You got a number one? I do indeed. It kind of goes along with the high rating this show popped. It was a little deal they did to bring pro wrestling to weekday primetime, which had never been done before. This aired on a Friday night on NBC, which is crazy, and everyone fucking watched it, like everyone in the world. Not only was the audience at home super stoked to watch this, but the audience in the crowd. Oh, they were so lathered up, my this. friend. You see people talking these days about this guy's over, that guy's over, this guy got the biggest pop, that guy got the biggest pop, all these things, overs and pops that people want to talk about. Yeah. These people these days talking about wrestling have no idea that ain't shit. what it looks like to be over. That ain't shit. This you don't know over. crowd is just roaring. We And it's know not like over. in response to when it, somebody does something, like they'll roar very loud. It's just... A sustained roar this entire 49 minutes, like so loud that you can't hear the yeah, commentators, no one sat you can't down, hear dude. anything in the ring, everybody's standing, everybody's screaming, like these people are insane well, to can... watch this fucking, and like did they see WrestleMania 3? I mean, this is like, Andre can't move anymore, Yeah, guys. you know he's like this match dead, is gonna right? suck, what are you all so hyped up for? And like, Poor fucker could barely climb up those steps to get in the goddamn ring. You can hear Jesse the Body Ventura because he actually knows how to announce, but yeah, you can't hear Vince. I was, well, is that, that, like, was going to say, is that another one of your pot shots at Vince McMahon's announcing? Vince is like, oh, I'm standing over here. These little shots you're always taking at Vince McMahon like he's not a seasoned uh, play-by-play man who no. knows what he's doing out no. there. Ladies and gentlemen, the chairman of the board, Vincent K. Yeah, McMahon. the chair for yeah. Vince. Yeah. What a maneuver. Uh, you, I feel like I got a real I could broadcast him against under the this table. guy. Real vendetta. He's out there. He's giving it his all. Tired of him burying the likes of a uh, Stevie Ray and a uh, John Madden. That's right. Is that the guy's name? John Madden? Uh, no. Steve? Maybe. Crazy Joe Davola Madden? Might have been John Madden. He was really fat. That you fat guy, guy who yeah. always said Snoochie Boochies as his catchphrase. That's remember pretty that? cool. Snoochie Boochies, Tony. That's pretty cool. Oh man! And then he also you know, I just want to abandon when this. When Hugh Morris would do his moonsault, he yeah. would go fly, fat ass, fly. That's really cool. That too. guy was a big Kevin Smith fan, dude. Probably like literally the fattest, and also like the biggest though too. Do you just want to abandon this show and just do a Nitro podcast? Um, just call it Nitro Party. It sounds real good in the moment right now when we're rem- reminiscing, yeah. but. You know, oh, those things were three hours. Got three hours. Man. Oh, yeah. fuck. I was about to, I was about to break that to you. Whew. Those things fucking hit three hours for quite a while. Maybe we and can just kind of break them. In this I'll segment. tell you what, buddy. They were, they were not packed full. They were stretching things out. Yeah, for they were really God. stretching things out. <sighs> We'd be better off doing thunder. Let's just stick where we're at. Yeah. What's your number two? Yeah. Uh, well, I kind of already brought it up. Oh, that's convenient. We don't even have to talk about it. Well, a little bit more. Jesse Von... Jesse Von... Jesse Von... Jesse Von Jesse Ventura. Von, Jesse Von Body Von Tura. Count Jesse Von Ventura. Jesse Von Body Von Tura is a Color really man good announcer. What the hell was he wearing this event? It doesn't matter. He He's had like, like, dressed some, like some sort of magic cone Rockabilly hat. Swami or something. It doesn't matter. He's fucking Jesse Ventura, I, I get, man. I mean, he shows up in goofy outfits. That's yeah. his thing. But this Flew is... in from Los Angeles. List. This seemed a little half assed. This sounds like he seemed like he bought something from like the gift shop in the, the airport on his way to the fucking oh, arena. No, no, no. He was at uh oh this is Indianapolis. Mm-hmm. This is nineteen eighty eight. That's right. So he's in the uh what was the uh what they had like the train station mall there. Oh yeah, they tore sure. it down. You Union remember the one? Station, yeah, yeah, Union Station. There is a yeah. sweet hotel in there that my hotel mom still and there. my stepdad like to go still to a there. lot. Where they had train car rooms you could yeah, stay in because it used to be Union Station. There was a you sweet still can. subterranean mall under the uh, 
the, the hotel? The subterranean mall is now gone. Oh, uh, you are got to be kidding me. No, but the hotel is there. I used to play a Royal Rumble arcade game there all the live long yeah, day. Yeah, I was. I liked that place because they had a, like a shirt store before there were like shirt stores. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And like any some shirts there, any Kramer shirt you wanted oh, to get, yeah. psh, they I had them. I, I think that's like, where I got my far side shirts that oh, I wore hell in like fourth yeah. grade. Yeah. Well, like, had a couple of sweet far side what shirts What fourth, in there? fifth grader doesn't need a, I gotta have my Cubans shirt, oh, you know? Oh, yeah, like, super, that's, super stylish there. Yeah. I also remember uh, buying some uh, Pogs at one point. Did you get that uh, Steve Allen one? <laughs> it, was, it was all Elf for me. Uh, it was all Elf Pogs. That's pretty cool, But no, too. I bought a handful of them because it was like, these things are popular as fuck. Like, this is huge. Everybody's gonna be jealous of all these Pogs. I s- and then I- Pogs never hit my school. I was waiting for them to hit. I was yeah. going to be like, I'm ahead on this trend. I was in the big city of Indianapolis, and I know what's coming. And I'm then gonna, it, Pogs just never got here. I'm going to come clean with you. Uh, wow. I know I work for Johnny Law these days. That's real square. Cobb County, you know, jail. I don't care what anybody says. It is not hip to be square. But uh, back then, I stole a lot of Pogs from the Ooh. venture. A lot of pogs from the venture. So the last place I'd be wanting to steal shit from, you get shot stealing something in venture. No, nah, they never knew. Those were some hood rat cashiers they we had working in venture. used to rob that place blind. Not the one in Homewood. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. Just classy. Gorgeous. Yeah. I was talking about the, the one in Gary I, I would always oh, go to. Oh, yeah. No, that sounds awful. Yeah. Gary, oh, Indiana. God. It yeah. was... Uh, not the nicest venture from what I remember. Oh, Ventura did good. But the service merchandise a couple doors down in the same service strip mall, merchandise they is always, always kept nice. their shit top notch. Yeah. It was an impeccable store. Did you ever go to a Goldblatt's? Because we had one of those. I've never been to a Goldblatt's. Yeah, just... There was a place called Zayers mm-hmm. back in the day, too. There was, I don't yeah. remember anything Zayers about it, though. Yeah, I just remember my mom dragging me there every once in a while. No worse time in a person's life than when you're so young, you have to go everywhere your mom goes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, that like four to like six age or whatever before like they'll leave you home for a couple hours. Do by they yourself. have a, Do they have a toy section there? They don't. Oh my god! Well, what the fuck are we doing there? We got to go to South Lake Mall, and we're not going to KB Toys until the last stop. <sighs> this is going to be a snoozer. Yeah. Wow, that's awful. Jesse Ventura did a good job. He called Hulk Hogan out for all his bullshit, mm-hmm. like the rakes of the mm-hmm. eyes. We'll get to that later, probably. But uh, Jesse Ventura, he makes shit bearable. I love him. You got a number two? Yeah. Um, we could talk about the Honky Tonk Man and what well, a honky solid dog, man. heel package this guy was. He's the total fucking he package, Lex Luger. Remembered as being like sort of a joke. I feel like because it was mm-hmm. like, oh, he's one of the longest reigning IC title holders ever, and he fucking he's sucks. A boob. That's ridiculous. But no, he was great. Him, this is Jimmy Hart's greatest masterpiece. Yeah, just like greatest pairing ever. Peace These de two resistance. are so good together. Jimmy Hart's our favorite manager of all time. He's got a great fucking entrance music. Like he comes down. That to, music fucking cooks. It just fucking dude. rips. I would listen to it just for fun. Yeah. Uh, his dumb promos where he talks in his stupid Tennessee accent are great and uses all the all those quotes Elvis from Elvis promos, songs. Yeah. It's so annoying. He looks chubby and stupid in his Elvis jumpers, which is great, but he always acts like he's sexy, which rules. Like it's 1988. It's not like Elvis just died and it's not like people are like clamoring for like somebody when to like. did Elvis die? Uh, 70 something. Okay. 78, yeah, 79, I want to say. I don't think he even made it to the 80s. Yeah, I didn't think so either. I didn't think I was alive when Elvis was alive, but yeah. they like made some sort of comment on commentary as if Elvis was still alive. And no. I was just like, is that just uh, Vince being a dum-dum or is he just like winking to the idea that like people say that Elvis is still alive or what? Because he's like, oh, Elvis has got to be pissed about this or something yeah. like that. And I was yeah, like, who knows? what are you talking about, Vince? I'm Elvis sure is he's dead. fucking dead, man. I'm pretty sure he's dead. They add Sherry out there and his mom as his new girlfriend. What were they calling her? Uh, some sort of. There's fucking... one thing that she don't need is another little cold hunger mouth. So now he's got Peggy Sue. Peggy Sue. He's got Sherry out there causing distractions. She was fucking phenomenal. She's man. going nuts, just doing all those fifty sock hops, dances, go ahead. and this, hollering. This is my th- my number three. Is this you whole got match, Jimmy so Hart out there just fucking it. doing distractions? You got Honky Talk Man taking every shortcut. So like. 
what you got is just like this well-oiled heel machine where Macho oh, Man loses great. this match. Well, he wins technically, but the match ends and he looks like he could beat the shit out of Honky Tonk Man. He looks like the better wrestler, but still, Honky Tonk Man just beat him at every level. That's yeah. great booking because both these guys come out just top stars looking like a million bucks. The heel work, like we go on and on and talk about all the time about how great the, so. uh, the tag work between... Uh, our guys, uh, Double A oh, and yeah. Tully Blanchard, I'm right? Tully. You talk about that well-oiled machine, like where every, you know, leg vine and every little toe hold. Cut off those hot lock. tags. Cut yeah. off those hot tags. All that shit. Honky Tonk and Jimmy Hart are the absolute equivalent to that in terms oh, yeah. of like a heel manager wrestler. Like that whole spot the they were page. where like Jimmy's on one side of the ring and he's distracting Macho and then fucking Honky Tonk ties him up in the ropes, gets the ref distracted or what, one's whatever One's distracted and one's cheap shot. And they one's do that distracted thing. and one's cheap shot. Macho piss or uh, Jimmy Hart pisses off Macho. Macho chases him around the ring. Jimmy Hart runs into the ring, conveniently drops the megaphone mm-hmm. in the middle of the mm-hmm. ring while Macho keeps chasing him all the way to the ropes. Ref chases Jimmy Hart out of the ring, and then Honky Tonk just happens to find the megaphone These guys and blasts Macho with it. It's like they're, it's great they're a flock of birds out there. It's they great know which shit, direction. man. And then what's added to this element with Sherry out there is now you've got somebody who can believably maybe beat up Elizabeth, which yeah. the crowd hates. Anytime anybody goes anywhere near Elizabeth and acts like they're going to slap her or push her or anything, like people are furious because Elizabeth is such a, such a delicate little flower, Matt. I tell you what, man, I can remember not being a huge fan of Elizabeth as a child. Well, yeah. And then like kids I, just don't get it. I watch this shit now, and it's like, she was she was really a hindrance. Oh, yeah. She did, She offered nothing. She's out there, just pure, just storyline driving plot point. That's what she is. Plot point in a ball gown. She was always really concerned and like on the verge of tears often. This is like I've said, women are like a weight around your neck. You need to just get rid of them and try to win championship belts. That's what life is about. That's a very... You know I always say that. Yeah. It's, well, there's a lot of thoughts in that. Yeah. Yeah. How many championship belts all these married guys out there got? Probably zero. Because their wives won't let them buy them online. How many has John Cena got? 16. Because he goes on eBay and he buys all the ones he wants. Is that what we're talking That's, about? Well, no. I mean, you've got more disposable income to go on eBay and buy championship like, no, I get what you're saying. You like, your like, wife's like, you can't buy that $500 like, championship belt dancing. online. Why are you going to get that replica of the 80s era yeah. NWA US title? Like, that's just a waste of money. And it's like, look at all these blank spots on our walls, babe. How could we hang a belt? This place needs to be decorated. How could we hang a belt? How's that a waste of money? Smoke a skull belt, babe. Smoke a skull belt. You can buy all these Yankee candles and I don't say anything about the Yankee candles. And we're going to, that brings us back to one of our original points and most important points on this show. White guys, Mm -hmm. don't be bringing belts to shows. you look stupid. You look like a big baby man. We know you're not getting any Mm -mm. if you're carrying that belt around. That means there's no lady there telling you not to buy that belt. It's embarrassing unless you're a brother. That's right. Black guys right. are so inundated in bling, they can pull it off. They can do it, man. You just can't. Don't tell me it's fair, or it's not fair, or it's racist, or it's that. It's truthful. And I know That's those are dreads. You just haven't showered in a month. Yeah. Stinky white guys. White man. guys, get your fucking axe together. Oh, God. You see that promo that Macho did before this match where he was more beat red than I've ever seen okay, anyone in my life? Okay, that brings me to another point here. He was so beat red, he was fucking purple. Did you we think watched... he was going to die? Because I thought he was going to fucking die. Uh, luckily, I spoiler alert, I know how this story ends. Okay. And, you know, his Did... heart explodes while he's in a Jeep. You oh, okay, see? that was many years later. Um, but you bring up a good point. I do recall we watched the Raw 25th anniversary together. Okay. With the sweet lady friend of mine, Maria. That's right. Mm-hmm. And do you remember when Brother Love came on the oh, show? Yeah. <laughs> Her comment was, why is he red? Is he really that red? Why is he red? Yeah. So she, this time... She didn't know if he was like really red or if it was makeup. Is that red guy again? And we, we laughed at her a little. Okay, like, yeah, no yeah. one's really that red, no, blah, blah, blah. Come on, give me a break. And uh, Macho Man came on the screen. In Brother Love paint. Screaming. Full on Brother Love paint. Just 
fuchsia. Like what do you past think he was dark on, red. man? Oh, just masses of massive amounts of like it had to be like a eight ball the size of like Andre's fist, you uh, know? It could have possibly came directly out of Andre's fist. It I mean, could have. Sounds like a plausible story to uh, me. Uh but yeah, she turns to me and she's like like how how does he to get that red, and I was like, "Well, he's on a lot of cocaine. He's not supposed to be that red." And she's this like, is, "She's like, why well, just? This is an anomaly." She's like, "I just, I didn't know what to ask or say because last time I asked about that red man, you guys <laughs> laughed at me." And I was like, "Oh, that's a very good point. Mm-hmm. That's a very good point. I didn't think about '80s wrestling when we laughed at you. <laughs> that match was great, though. There's a lot of weird stuff going on in the world good. of wrestling. You know good who was uh, not happy about the match? Who's that?" Pissed off dad in the front row with his arms crossed over his blue v-neck sweater. Dude, there was like Just so a many... mean look on his face the whole time. Fucking Hoosiers that were sitting front row. I can't row. believe my kid made me buy front row tickets to this thing and come to it. It's Friday night. He I should be out at the local bowling alley. I should be at the VFW or working on throwing that perfect game at the at the bowling alley. Oh man, last week we got so close. He was in the yeah. high 280s. Yeah. He did. High 280s. A lot of people say he was only a frame or two away. I've heard people say that. Yeah. Uh, Everybody else liked it, man. Why be such a sourpuss sitting no, on a dude, fucking like, hard side camera center that, with your arms crossed? You talk, he was the one like just Put on a show the, for uh, your kid at least, you fucker. I'm going to tell you right now. Here's a sad story. My parents never took me to this shit as a kid. Oh, man. And I had to go once we were like in high school and knew how to drive and get <sighs> ourselves there. That's rough. Isn't it? It's, uh, plus, couldn't you not have cable, too? Well, yeah, for a long, this is long like, time. You might as well have just grown up in Lebanon. Like, un- practically grew up in Lebanon. Uh, you know, my WCW stuff, like, this, the shit we're watching in 88, like, mm-hmm. I never saw any of that, because none of that reached, you know, yeah, broadcast television, just cable. Uh, but WWF, you know... I knew because occasionally they'd show it on Sundays or Saturdays. There was no real rhyme or reason. Like whatever UPN or this WPWR was, TV. This is would we're gonna get it. into this a little bit later, but yeah. you know, this was this event tonight, one of my earliest yeah, memories Channel Five, yeah. Of watching pro wrestling and it really stands out to me. So right around here or a couple weeks before yeah. here is when uh when I figured out that it was a thing and I got in and but I, I was, tell you, I don't remember the channels, but I had a very, uh, here in 88, I had I a very young, regular schedule where I was, I was watching young it as every hell. week. My parents weren't going to let me stay up late to watch uh, wrestling yeah, on Channel It was on every five. Saturday morning, though. Yeah, the Saturday morning shit I would okay. catch, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, either way. But yeah, good match. That was my number three. Okay, my number three, um, just pointing out one of the little production errors here. Oh. There was a lot of them on oh. this, uh... Ooh. And this is the first one. They wouldn't turn oh. off the mic on fucking Honky's music Ooh. when Macho was trying to cut a promo, which made me mad. Yeah, that was well, This one, we're, take, we're going to Hogan's uh, pre-match promo. Yeah. When Hulk Hogan's wearing the uh, same title belt we've been seeing him wear for months and months on TV, yeah. cutting his promo, getting ready to come out to the ring. And then when he comes out to the ring, he suddenly got the winged eagle title. First appearance of it. This is a big moment right here. Oh, this I didn't even realize. Went on to be like the fucking title, man. Hogan, Macho, fucking Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, all these assholes. This, yeah, that was the... This title yeah. is the one that finally lasted for a long-ass time. And this is the first night that it showed up. The must have Winged a, Eagle. Must have arrived late because they couldn't even fucking put it in Hogan's pre-match promo that they added it in. Yeah, you ain't kidding. But uh, it's nice to see that title out there because this yeah. is... When you talk about the WWF champion to this day, this is the one that I think of. Yeah. When somebody's holding that up, I'm like, okay, it's for real. This is this is really a world title match. I could get invested in this. That belt's got to come back at some point, don't you think? Why would you not bring it back? Yeah. But it seems like they've had so many opportunities at this point and just haven't done Failed it. Failed it. We can just start getting into my number four, which is uh, the Andre versus Hogan match. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Brother. Mine's just specifically the ending of this match. That's fine. And yeah, Hogan so is... Let's, uh, let's go into it. Hogan's jacked to the gills in this match. This he's, is... He's like prime Hogan One of shape. his greatest performances. Yeah. Not only is he huge, he's... Andre can't do shit, so he's creating all the movement in this match. Yeah. He's bouncing around. He takes Hogan, a bump off the top rope. Hogan gets a real rough shake of it, and like... Some of it's his fault in his career. A lot of it's a his lot fault. of it's his fault. He's a real piece of shit. Um, but 
Motherfucker could work, dude. Like he when knew, he wanted to, he knew how. Like when he knew he had to yeah. get a match over, he and, fucking he could do it. And maybe he wasn't the greatest wrestler. Maybe and he's a big goof. Yeah, like, he's a big I, don't, fucking I don't know, goof. but like if uh, if any motherfucker could get like story and psychology across, he could, dude. Mm-hmm. Like those people hung on every goddamn thing he did like a uh, thing where he's selling and he shakes he his could, head around a lot he could have did his little hair flippies start flipping around you all right that gets people real excited it's like having tassels on your boots when you're when he's you, got them on his head matt when you're in public or you're someplace that you like shouldn't fart uh-huh and you like go through that like little like oh god like oh, i gotta fart but like oh god i shouldn't let this out hogan could do like Five minutes of that in the ring, yeah. and the people would just be like behind him, <laughs> like a fart? thousand percent. I think he's gonna fart. Like, hold, hold it in, Hogan. You can do it. Your butt cheeks are so strong. You know, like, like he could do he'd, it. He'd, he'd milk it and milk it, and yeah. just, like his arm would be raising. Yeah, and like, like I gotta fart. I can't hold like, it. Oh, here guys. it comes. But then he'd clench his yeah, fist and like, start shaking no, his I'm gonna, fist. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fight no, he's this fart off. I'm fighting this fart off. He's still holding it in. Yeah, this guy's a legend. And he just keeps showing like butt cheek close ups, like in a no holds bar. Yeah, I think we're onto something. I can't believe Vince hasn't done this. Yeah. McMahon, get your get your shit together. Get your shit dude. together, dude. Yeah. This is right what in your fuck? fucking wheelhouse. Yeah, but so fuck. yeah, like props to Hogan. Like he carries this match. Like ho- like Andre's like worse than great Kali at oh, this point. Oh yeah, like WrestleMania three, you could tell like, oh, he's done. But this even like a few months later, he's super done. He literally crawls into the ring in his hands and knees up the steel stairs. Yeah. Like he can't fucking lift his foot high enough to get up a stair normally. Like, no, it's hard to watch. He goes for that fucking big boot spot in the middle of the match mm-hmm. and just falls right the fuck over. Right I was amazed he even over. got his foot up that high in the first place. But like, uh, like, luckily you got Big Virgil and DiBiase out there to create some Gaga, create some more movement, yeah. take a lot of bumps on it's, the apron. It's. <sighs> This match is just pure gaga. It's just three guys yeah. working around like a big immovable. It's lump. one of the most well orchestrated matches of all time. Yeah, yeah. It's up there with like that uh rousy tag team match they did a couple weeks ago at WrestleMania where yeah. it's just like we're gonna figure out who can do what and we're gonna and work that's around what, what they can do, do. And then yeah. we're not gonna do anything else. We're just gonna pretend that all those other problems don't mm-hmm, exist. Mm-hmm. And figure for out one, what you can do for one magical moment. Only do that. It's gonna be this great. Magic moment. Yeah. Ooh. Fuck, that's a good song. Andre the Giant still looks like a wrestler. Is that Jay and the Americans? Absolutely. Oh, God bless him. <laughs> Sweeter than a wine. But this uh, finish to this match specifically, the twin referees, the fast count. Hogan gets fast counted. He's incredulous. Andre gives the belt to Million Dollar Man. Everybody is losing their minds. How could Hogan lose the title? I never thought Hogan would lose the title. This referee, clearly it wasn't a three count. Oh, don't forget, Andre handing the belt to DiBiase. World Tag Team yeah. Championship. Oh, there's no surprise. I told you it happened. I was be Tag Team Champion of the World. World Tag Team Championship. Uh, Andre, wait. <laughs> it's not the tag team title. But then a second Dave Hebner comes out confronts the Dave Hebner that does the two count. They're pushing each other around. They get in a referee I like how fight. before they do that, though, they do a little bit of the uh, Lucille Ball Harpo marks like, oh, yeah, sure. in the mirror. Like, I turn my head, what am you I turn my head. Here? I move my hand, you move your hand. Instantly, yeah. the uh, assumption is, oh, my God. Not that this referee has a twin brother. It's the million-dollar man paid millions of dollars to have somebody plastic surgery altered to take Dave Hebner's place. They paid him off. They had Dave Hebner locked in the back somewhere. This, like, I was just, this is one of the first wrestling shows I watched, and it blew my mind. I was like, there are things happening in the world I didn't even know about. This is crazy. I got to figure out what's going on in this wrestling thing. This wrestling thing is what I am obsessed with now. That's right. And you weren't the only guy who felt that way. That brings me to my number five. Oh, yeah. Hulk Hogan's thoughts after the match. Oh, yeah. This absolutely. Possibly one of the greatest wrestling promos. There's two, like, that stand out to me. There's two that stand out to me. Like, if you're talking, I mean, like, in WCW, there's the Dusty Rhodes, Funky is a Monkey, you know, oh, like yeah, that's sure. one of the popular ones. But there's two that stand out for me in WWF. And number one is Ultimate Warriors, 
directions on how to get to parts unknown. Okay, yeah, that makes a lot you of know, sense. You know, where you tear down the so, cockpit wall. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, and then the other one Hulk is this Hogan. One. Hulk Hogan. And I quote, how much money did they spend on the plastic surgery, man? How much money did they spend on plastic surgery, man? I had all bases covered. I had the Hulkamaniacs watching DiBiase. I had Virgil in his place. Never in my wildest dreams, Mean Gene, would I think I would get ripped off by a penny-pinching two-time in referee. How much money on the plastic surgery? How much money did he spend to pay the referee off? When I turned around, Mean Gene, they were identical. Identical! They were identical! Look at the shoulder, brother. Look at the shoulder. He's got a hundred dollars. The referee is paid off, brother. Look at the hundred dollar bills falling out of his pocket. My God, Hulkamaniacs. He really just sells this as being the biggest shocking thing that's ever happened in the fucking history of wrestling. Like when I'm watching this as a kid, like I've I watched a little bit of the build up. I knew that Hulk Hogan had been champion literally my entire lifetime. Yeah. I was just like, wah. He lost the wah. How could this wah? Yeah, that was like one of the things you go tell your parents about, even though they couldn't give a fuck yeah, less like, about oh, wow, what happened. That's, that's yeah, I can't believe it. But meanwhile, like you're pacing around the. That's not true. My stepdad room. ordered one of those Hulk Hogan shirts with the rips nice, in the back. He was nice. pretty. He was a Hulkamaniac for sure. You're just like pacing the floor, like oh, I can't believe what I just saw. <laughs> Good luck getting <laughs> to bed tonight. Yeah, I got Saturday morning cartoons tomorrow. Do I- do I take my vitamins and say my prayers before I oh, go to sleep geez, tonight? Or does none of that matter anymore? anymore? I don't even does know None of that anymore. matter anymore. Nothing <laughs> mattered. That kind of ruined you, my vibe. You probably slept in the next day and didn't even watch Saturday morning cartoons. Nah, yeah. I, you were like hungover from this. Saturdays, I had to get up and go to my dad's house. Oh. So either way, I was Oof. getting drug out of fucking bed. Oh. What a what a tragic life I had. Oh, God. Uh, my number five is just talking about how everybody always complains about screw job finishes, and they're just like, you gotta have clean finishes on your wrestling shows. You hate all these screw job finishes. But that's not the whole story, because this, this show had two matches. Both of them ended in just screw job finishes, but everybody went away from it just remembering it and thinking it was great and thinking it was awesome. Because the screw jobs actually served a purpose, and they, they furthered yeah. the stories along. Like, Macho Man looked better than the IC champion and moved away from the IC champion, moved him up to main event. He's ready for the main event. Title needed to get off Hogan. Hogan's not the champion for the first time. These are two screw jobs, but they set up big things. Yeah, you got the, the uh, whatchamacallit, the old dusty finish that mm-hmm, gets overused. Mm-hmm. See, and that's then- when it doesn't work, is when you're just spinning your wheels and keeping the status yeah. quo that's when you need to bitch about screw jobs when it's just pussy footing around and yeah. they couldn't come up with a finish when you got a screw job that actually moves the story forward and is a big event like people the, don't care they don't complain the last like six years of tna you yeah know? they think they hate it but they don't or the first six years of TNA. oh running oh running uh, jared's yeah. still the champ because of the run-ins and the uh, guitar shot. Uh, Jared's still the champ because yeah. of the run-ins and the guitar shot. Or a good like six years of Taker's work where refs just kept mm, getting bumped. Mm. I think Taker just hates referees. Nitro is desperately out of time. <sighs> it's a good show. It's just a well-done Solid show. 49-minute show. Everything you needed. Do yeah. you think... All right. Do you think that crowd was so hot because of... Uh, Hulkamania, brother. Yeah, He's the, running wild. That's what I'm saying. The content that was delivered... Or do you think it was like Indianapolis was just fucking excited they were seeing a worthwhile show? I think they just came in hot just because wrestling was so hot right now. WrestleMania three was the biggest. This thing has got to be just total mainstream crossover. This show is most likely the absolute pinnacle of Hulkamania. Oh yeah, definitely. This after this, like they're trying to get other faces over at the yeah. same time too this is like the last moment where hogan was like the guy the guy the only guy they cared about so much so they thought they were going to make him a mainstream hollywood star and like yeah. it was only after this that they kind of had to start coming up with plan b's and shit so yeah i'm gonna say this is the peak of fucking hulkamania yeah and it, it felt like it that's uh he, it he was like getting it. a lot of weird tang 
back here in 1988. Oh, right? Like, what kind of strange you think so, he was? Because he's so famous, you know he's pulling shit, but he's also so weird looking that yeah. it's got to be weird stuff. Yeah. Like, you got to have a weird fetish if you're going to climb on top of Hulk Hogan. Yeah. And, like, what's his weird fetish? Ride Pasta Mania Mountain, brother. <laughs> Ooh, Pasta Mania. <laughs> Newest store in the mall, but still the longest line. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that means, but he does. People are starting to get into that astronaut ice cream. Limp noodles. That's all I'm thinking. Limp noodles all over my face. What is a boy to do? (sighs) Join us for the three count. Promotional consideration paid for by the following. Hey, me fellas. Look here. Seagulls. Boy, they want cooler. Seagulls. Nine outrageous years, Night Court has made us laugh like never before. <laughs> but Wednesday night, it all comes to an end. Court's adjourned. It's a special hour of smiles, hugs, and farewells. Bye, Art. Some will stay, and some will go forever. The surprising final Night Court, NBC Wednesday. Boom, 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 uh sad day harry the hat died that's yeah. why you're going into that night yeah. court that was the night yeah, court theme song right paying a little fucking tribute right there yeah, man rest in peace to him were you a fan of that show uh not really Although I probably saw like a hundred episodes yeah, of it as yeah. a kid. I did not That's have just cable, because when so. I was a kid, I watched every TV show yeah. that was on. Uh, I'll tell you who else is dead. Barbara Bush. These people on Twitter, yeah, they're throwing around all dead Barbara Bush jokes willy-nilly. And I'm like, wait a second. <whistles> just yesterday, you were offended at every fucking thing anybody said now, about anything. Now, Barb. Now, suddenly, Barbara now Bush dies, Barb. and it's cool to make fun of a dead old lady who just died? What are the rules here with yeah, all of your fucking Go fuck yourself. fake internet outrage out there? Now, Barb. Some things are just absolutely you cannot now, say. Barb. Some things are just totally fine. Fuck you, people. Now, make fun Barb. of everything. Me and Dennis Miller. Back to making all sorts of off color jokes. Back to Judge Harry. Okay, yeah, Night I forgot Court. we were eulogizing he was uh, a, Harry the Hat. He was a big fan of Mel Cheers. Torme. Another show I didn't really like, but probably saw a hundred episodes of. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's really fun. Little kids in the nineteen eighties, they didn't have anything to do but watch no. every episode of every television no. show. But I tell you what, having to have had to watch all those episodes of Cheers made you a stronger person, I think. No, made me a stronger f- fan of Frasier in the nineties. That's very true. You know, because I could appreciate it. I was like, really? he's the guy from Cheers. One amazing gift that show gave yeah. us. Uh, uh, it's Ted Danson. But if there's another yeah. one, it's that Frasier spinoff. That was yeah. some uh, yeah. high-minded humor that came out of that show but, right uh, there. Whatchamacallit. I like uh, Eddie the Dog. Uh, Night Court was a big show to me. Mm-hmm. I can remember one of my earliest boners. Well, the first... It was, of course, to uh, Sloan Peterson. Boner jams. Fred, uh, Ferris Bueller's girlfriend. Okay. That's the first one. But uh, right behind that had to have been uh, Marky Post in a yeah. Night Court. I don't really remember getting any boners or watching Night Court. I didn't have a lot to watch, man. Mm, is that or Barney was, Miller? Mine was all about the Batgirl episodes of the 60s Batman Oh, shows. don't, do not get That's, me started. Do not get me started, my man. memories of uh, Googling a girl up and First of down all, and being like, if I'm getting a boner over 60s Batman, it's well, Julie Newmar, well, first and foremost. There, but number two. Yvonne Craig. Yeah, yeah we went uh, to a... I like a, that red wig you put on. We went to a Comic Con uh, a couple years ago. I mean, it was like Nerd two alert. years ago or so. That's fine. And uh, I like to watch the people dress up. I don't partake, but I like to watch the people dress up. And there was a young girl dressed as like 90s Psylocke with like the, you know, wait, 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 crazy wait, 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 wait. like. How young? 
18, 19, maybe 20. And she's got like the fucking, you know, Jim Lee, like crotch all the way oh, up, yeah. way past your hip bone, that whatever. Bay watch cut. Yeah. And she's wearing that shit. And it's just like, God damn, like your full ass is just God out. God damn, pal. God damn, pal. Your, your ass is just out. And like, it was, it was, it was erotic. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was a hot thing. Wait, but, she wasn't a great big fat person? But here. <laughs> I like fat people cosplay. Well, hell yeah, you That's do. That's what's up. Also, so like, the movies starring the fat boys. This chick's showing all that shit, just looking <laughs> slutty as hell, and it's like, that's kind of hot. God bless her. But then I saw a girl in full, full 1960s Batman Batgirl attire. There you go. There Purple, you go. boots, gold accents, mm. red hair, uh, and I was like, this is doing something. My this is doing something so much more. Than 90s slutty Psylocke. It was the 90s slutty Psylocke girl doing a British accent because that would have kind of turned me <laughs> off a little bit. Hello, governor! Oh, jeez. She's going all the way with it. But Night Court was a good show. Nothing worse than a hot chick who thinks she can do voices and like everybody pretends like she can because she's a hot chick. So then she just keeps trying to do voices. Oh, she's like, she's not just hot. She's funny, too. Uh, uh, Pick a lane. Yeah, that's... That's Pick my a least lane. favorite kind of person. One time leaving a uh, Milwaukee Brewers versus the Cubs game. Really, mm-hmm. really drunk. Uh, it was my brother's birthday. Little Davey Arshyster and we're okay. leaving. Wow. And there's a bum in an overpass. And he's got a saxophone. And he's doing like the Flintstones. And he's like doing shit that to me. makes Sounds people. Sounds like you might be a Cosby grandpa. There's, there's making, he's just making people laugh. And uh, I raise a whole dollar into the air. And I yell, it's my brother's birthday. Play the theme to Night Court. Mm. But I'm telling you. By the time play the theme mm-hmm. comes out of my mouth, wah, 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 wah. he's already started. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah, yeah, Those he was Chicago right there. Bums, man, they deliver. This is a Milwaukee bum. This is a Milwaukee bum. Milwaukee has bums. Yeah, yeah. Wow. They hang out outside of the Brewer Stadium, and I'm assuming the Potawatomi Casino. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I haven't been to either yeah. in my travels to Milwaukee. I've never seen a bum. Just a bunch of chubby people. There's so much chubbier up there than you. we are down here in Chicago. God. My brother brought up a great point. I know we're going way off topic, but it's worthwhile because you go up to Milwaukee every once in a while. Mm-hmm. Before, he went up there for like a bachelor party and they were just boozing and whatever. That sounds pretty dodgy. But there's like, <laughs> Don't be telling me stories out of turn. What a great way to pregame. They stopped at the Mars Cheese Castle for a oh, couple drinks. Wow, yeah, there you go. That's a fucking, that's a pro move right Double there. Double fist and bricks of cheese and prosciutto. Right? Down in some fucking German beers, Whatever probably. you want, man. A like spicy mustard yeah. on those stripper tits. Oh, we got to get a little dinner and a couple drinks in us. Let's get a couple deli sandwiches at the fucking Mars Cheese Buy Castle. a jar of spicy mustard. We're going to spread it on those stripper tits. That's a genius idea. Yeah, that's, I wonder if they do parties at the Mars Cheese Castle. Can we get a stripper there? They probably got side rooms. They yeah, did a lot of yeah. expanding in the I don't last see couple why years. Not. I don't see why not. <sighs> those are for old people, all those stories we told. But <laughs> way back when we were young people, weren't we, Nate? Uh, no, I remember. Young people Vague watching Cheers. Images. Young people watching Night Court. So yeah, we're talking about the main event tonight. It was one of my earliest memories of watching pro wrestling. So, you know, we thought, hey, for this three count we're doing here, why don't we go back and talk about our earliest wrestling memories? What got us into wrestling? What are the first things we remember about becoming a wrestling fan? Just going in the way And the weird machine. stuff it did to us and how it kind of put us on a trajectory to have our lives ruined you know what the sloan petersons and the batgirls did to us but mm-hmm. let's talk about rest what are those man. oiled up beefy men do to us let's talk about rest i'm not talking about the priests at our churches <sighs> what's your number one earliest wrestling memory okay or number uh, three or whatever when we talked about this i just uh I know I have wrestling memories, but I'm talking about just the ones that stuck out the most. No, no, you gotta, you gotta cue up a little fucking, uh, uh, fucking uh, Wonder Years, uh, Joe Cocker, oh, yeah. little help from my. <laughs> 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 
baby. Like, can we get Daniel Stern to recount all of our wrestling memories? We should just There's no way he's doing that much. Do a transcript of what we say right now. And just email send him it the transcript him. And, and, just be like, and a check for fifty bucks. And just do a Does dry read. Right? Just do a dry read of this just, into just your phone. A check for fifty and then bucks. Email right? it to us, man. Yeah, there's no way he says no. Part time job is the answer. Oh, mom, I couldn't ask you to do that. You're already taking care of Maggie, and Lisa is such a hand. She means you should get a job, stupid. Me? Get a job? Were they serious? I didn't realize it at the time, but a little piece of my childhood had slipped away. Forever. Bart, what are you staring at? Uh, nothing. He didn't say it, and neither did I, but at that moment, my dad and I were closer than we Bart! ever... Bart! Stop it! Sorry. To everything. Oh, this is gonna be good. Fuck it, I'm gonna see if he'll do it. I'm not. I'm not joking around Production either. Value through the roof. Uh, so things that jumped out to me, uh, and one of those first things, and Stern, you got to do that burp too. Oh God, I can remember a, a new pay per view. Mm. New one. The add into the Stun. original five. Is that what we're talking about? Add into the original three. Oh, okay. Okay. This is going way back. Yeah. Uh, it was a new crazy thing called a summer's slam. Yes. Okay. In the sweet, sweet year of our Lord, baby Jesus, 1988. There were some matches on there. There were some things and it was in uh, New York or Jersey. One of the two doesn't even fucking matter because those people fucking blow. But a thing happened, man. There was a guy who talked about him earlier and he was a champion and he was a champion for a long, long, long time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the problem was, yeah, yeah, come to your yeah. town in my pink Cadillac. I'm he did, honky tonk man. And he was, and I'm he came to their town man. in his pink Cadillac. I'm just a honky tonk man. But the problem I'm was, cool. Nate, I'm cocky, I'm bad. He was too cocky that night. Was he? He had been champion for so long. He said, "You bring anybody out here, open challenge, motherfucker. I'm gonna beat them." Cue up that fucking heavy metal this guitar, is also bro. One of my earliest memories just, of watching da, wrestling. And I don't think any of us, and maybe it's hindsight and maybe it's whatever, but I don't think we ever saw the fucking warrior run to the ring that fast as he did that what. night. C was angry that day, my friends. Right? Like an old man trying to send back soup in a deli. And he hit that ring, full sprint, and he just started throwing Blown those by the time lines, he got there. And honky tonks like spinning through the air, trying to call like timeouts because he doesn't know what's happening to him. Never seen anything like Jimmy this. Jimmy Hart's trying to figure out a way to cheat while They're it happens. He's a well-oiled machine. They don't know how to deal with it. Just completely caught off guard. And what? Thirty-one seconds later. What a great way to end such a long title reign that people think are never right? going to end. Just fucking do it right? suddenly in like a twenty-second match out of nowhere. Here's this new guy full of steroids. That's a memorable moment. Just to destroy you. Mm. that's just you don't shake that man like that stays with you and you know i don't it, it was SummerSlam 88 so that means i watched it on uh whatever video coliseum, coliseum home, home video video for sure and fuck this is 88 so you're talking at least six months for a vhs to mm -hmm. roll around so there's a good chance i watched it in like 89 or whatever you pay 200 dollars, you could own a copy yourself absolutely well, oh i'm sorry do you have vhs or beta no, well, I'm going with beta. It's a superior no, technology. It's, that's only available on VHS. Well, I'm sorry, sir. Beta's superior technology. I, I understand, but this is only available on VHS. Uh, the world's crazy. Oh, please rewind, or we're going to charge you an extra dollar when you return that to Be the video kind. store. Be kind. My number three is the first time I ever heard about pro wrestling existing is when this older kid, forget his name, he was... A brown gentleman. Did he touch you guys or did he make you touch them? He had a Hispanic name. He was oh. probably about a good four years older than us. We had a tight crew. Everybody, we were in first grade together, nice. all in Miss Randolph's first grade class. We're here in the subdivision, one street away from our elementary school. So, you know, crew's tight, man. We're all based around the community. And then this guy comes rolling in and is like, hey, 
I'm going to play with you guys today. And we're like, oh, fuck. Uh, I don't know what we're going to deal with this. He's like, let's play WWF. And we're like, what is this fucking WWF, man? What are you even talking I'm about? I'm sorry, sir. One more time. We play dinosaurs. Like, we, you see all these rubber dinosaurs we've got spread around what, everywhere? Like the TV show we've dinosaurs? Got, no, like, not the mama? Did not exist yet. It was oh, okay. just, right. we like to play dinosaurs. We'd have a bunch of rubber dinosaurs. We'd fight. Like, the front porch steps would be volcanoes and shit. And, like, they'd fight each other. Either way. This guy wanted to play WWF. I had G.I. Joe's, you fucking deadbeat. I had that shit, too. But uh, specifically, me and this one kid really liked dinosaurs. This is how it all popped off real early in first grade. I just moved to this town, and this kid's like, let's play WWF. You guys are going to be like Demolition. I'm going to be Hulk Hogan. And we're like, what's this fucking, what are you even talking about? So then, like, he'd run us through the moves. He made you guys be Demolition? You know, these is when they were heels. So like, yeah, but that's cool. Yeah, I didn't think so at the time though. He was just like, no, that's he tried to sell it to us though. He's like, no, no, they're cool. They got like spikes and paint on their yeah, face. Yeah, hell and shit. yeah, and they're like, leather okay. daddies, bro. That's they're leather cool. daddies. But he'd like always just like you know be the older kid, like being like, oh, you know, this is how it's gonna go. This is how it's gonna go. And like he'd always be the big good guy, so he'd always get to win. And like he'd be like, oh, now I pin you and I win. I was just like, this fucking sucks. Like, where did this guy come from? I don't know what any of these things he's making me play are. So then I was just like, I got to watch this fucking wrestling thing and figure out what he's talking about. This guy is a real fucking dipshit, you know? He just doesn't know how to play right. He's trying to take over, so he didn't last long. Yeah, it sounds pretty cool. But the wrestling lasted long because, you know, I checked it out on Saturday morning. Wrestling lasted forever, bro. Found out they were going to do it on Friday night. It's just like, oh, big Friday night thing. Let me watch this. Talked about it earlier. Saw hey, that, Mom, Dad, you heard about this wrestling thing? Saw that Dave Hebner twin, how much did he pay for the plastic surgery thing? And just realized that the world was a magical place, and there were crazy men out there doing crazy things that had nothing to do with my little suburban enclave here. And I knew that I had to get out and, uh, you know, yeah, just spread your wings become a, little, a pro wrestler, basically. Yeah. And at that point, I was just obsessed. I was watching pro wrestling nonstop. So thanks to that kid who was too old to be playing with us, kind of a loser, didn't have any of his own friends, and spent like two weeks trying to make us play WWF. God bless him. Mm. You ruined my life, sir. What's got, your number two? Uh, number two, also 88. Oh. Late 88. Yeah. This is October 88. And I know I watched this shit live. It's getting getting close to Halloween. Because this wasn't a pay-per-view. This was the kind of thing that showed up on whatever episode of whatever you were watching. WWF Superstars. Most likely. Uh, I had an older brother. As yep. we've Teddy Bizclis. Teddy Bizclis. Well-established character here on the podcast. He's, good, he's a good egg, you know, honest Joe. You know, he, he makes some mistakes here and there. Sure, sure, sure. Nobody's but, perfect. But those mistakes he made allowed me to be perfect, you see? Oh, yeah. Because I was like, don't want to do that. I hear people describe you that way all the don't time. Don't want to do that. You hell, yeah, hell yeah, you know yeah, me. He's, yeah, he's perfect. He's perfect. He's perfect. I've noticed that too. And it turns out, Nate, I wasn't the only one that was perfect. No? Because they started showing clips of this blonde-haired gentleman. He was already coming in in 88, huh? He was on there. And he was playing a couple sports. Like, you play basketball? No. No, you don't? Absolutely oh, well, not. I just, I can spin a basketball on my finger and I can throw it over my shoulder shit. blinded and like it just a Harlem goes Globe in. Trotter. I can throw a pass to myself as I run it down and I can catch it. I can play billiards. I can I play darts. Whatever you want to play, physically I can do it. And there's one more fucking thing I can do and that is spit my gum into the motherfucking mm -hmm, air mm -hmm. and swat it before it hits the ground. You really love that he does that. Yes. I can't get you to stop talking no. about how much you love spitting gum. And Do you know it. how often I throw things behind me, nice. over my shoulder, and then catch it in front of me just to impress small children? No, yeah, I've seen you mess up and hit those kids in the head while you're doing it a lot of times. You're not going to get it every Whatever time. you throwing. I'm not Kurt Hennig. I've seen a lot of little kid tears over the years. But I'm going to try because those vignettes, man, they stood out to me. They made me the man that I am today. Is that why, why you still have that like tight ponytail? Fuck like, yeah! Telling you like grow your hair longer and you could have a real ponytail. No, but then you're like, no, I just want no. just enough hair to barely make a ponytail and a little curly on top. <laughs> uh, that's it. Where's my white towel? It's still working for you. Thank you. It means a lot to me. Mm -hmm. My number two is when I happened upon 
I was talking about earlier when you're that age where you got to go everywhere your mom goes, anywhere she goes. She said, a lot of those trips. It's a hard ticket. A lot to of Hawaii. those trips were going to the Walgreens. It's like, hey, we got to go to the Walgreens every fucking day for some reason. Dude, we didn't some shit at the Walgreens. We didn't get Walgreens by us until like way Walgreens later. Walgreens was in a life. late reli- arrival there, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You guys had them, surprised huh? me. Oh yeah, we had Walgreens all the way back. Which where like where it is now in the Crown Town? No, originally the Crown Point Walgreens was. Uh, where the auto part place next to Papa John's is, and that little uh, oh my goodness, strip mall. oh yeah. so that like was the that Dollar General. Walgreens. Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, down the street from the McDonald's, folks. But I was stuck with my mom. She was picking up tabloid rags because you know she's a high-minded individual that's into classy things. I'm gonna tell you right now, I'd probably date your mom. A la like 1990, whatever. Yeah, she had her mind on other things, man. I was... I would have I would have given it a shot. So I was incredulous to be in there until I came across the thing. I peeped in my eyes a little p- publication called Pro Wrestling Illustrated. Ho! Oh. Really blew my fucking mind. <sighs> blew my fucking mind because at this point I was watching WWF superstars. What year every was Saturday. this about? This was soon after my entry, and this has got to be 88, 89 at the latest. We're so, still, yeah, you're talking like late 88, this era, early 89. This, 88, I got to say. Yeah. I pick up this Pro Wrestling Illustrated, and I uh, start flipping through it, and I start seeing these pictures and these articles about these wrestlers that I've never heard of before. These wrestlers that have never been on Superstars. No. Who are these wrestlers? By the end of the week, I got pictures of Sting. I got pictures of Lex Luger torn out of this fucking thing, taped up on the wall in my bedroom. Turns out there's this whole other wrestling that's a different wrestling you, than the wrestling I got into. You, you and go And my ahead. mind was fucking blown. Uh, it you, was like finding out there's an alternate reality that exists out there. An Earth number two. The whole world's topsy-turvy. Dogs and cats living together. So I'm like crazy about this. I'm like, there's just, there's other wrestling? So I'm fucking find it on TBS. Yeah. Find that there's, I can watch it on my TV. Now I've got two wrestlings to watch. And this just blew my whole fucking mind open. I couldn't believe it. I was just like stammering and stuttering probably for a good week after this Pro Wrestling Illustrated just blew my mind open and introduced me to all this crazy shit I didn't know about. It's, man. Southern wrestling. You stumbled across, like, the Holy Bible. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, essentially. So, like, all right, so... The real Rosetta Stone of extended virginity. You're you're not watching, you know, this isn't Saturday Night Event. You you come big in uh, the main event in February Mm -hmm, 5th, mm -hmm, 88. mm -hmm. So this is, when you find Pro Wrestling Illustrated, this is most like what month god it's it's got to be maybe like summertime yeah maybe like okay. june or something i yeah, don't know like a june or july I feel like it was summer vacation that's why okay. i was at walgreens right. with okay. my mom during the day instead of being at school so we're talking a good four to five months later mm-hmm. you've mm-hmm. you've absorbed every minute of wrestling oh, yeah. you can at, that at point, this point that i knew every minute you knew of. every little every minute thing you knew about of. current yeah. wwf like yeah obsessive you were like ah, i gotta get a couple of those giant ass rubber figures there's no yeah. internet back then you can't no. just bing shit and learn no. about it no you had to just fucking drink it in wherever if you don't you have could. like an older brother to tell you about shit you're a fucking babe in the woods absolutely absolutely so let's uh fuck i'll give you benefit of the doubt let's say it's even july 88 mm-hmm. okay yeah my birthday's get, coming up all right your birthday's coming up you got this issue of pro wrestling illustrated you know who sting is now pwi yeah sting Ooh, how like a rocket how much how how much later how many months later how many days later mm-hmm. did you go into the barber shop and were you like give me the stinger it had to have been that christmas when i was asking for wrestling figures that i got my first wcw wrestling figures i would imagine yeah. and i had my stinger and you could so take them to the barber shop reference where i could be like yeah. buddy hey, take a look at this hey lady hey bo ricks lady yeah and hey, quit giving me this usual haircut you're always giving me give me this stinger bleach blonde flat top nice with the tail in the back nice. quit fucking around and give me and this hairdo do? She'd always be like, you don't have the type of hair to have that haircut. And I'd be like, who's paying your fucking salary here? I'm, I'm telling pretty sure you. I'm it's my mom. You're not telling me. Yeah, so go fuck yourself. Yeah. Did she give you the tail on the back? No, she'd never give me anything. She'd just give me the normal fucking whatever haircut I had. Sounds be, like- I was spiking it up a lot. 
Like Iceman. But yeah, but yeah. I had some real, like, you know, I had some thin hair, so it was just a pound L.A. looks in my hair every day. Sounds, it was more L.A. looks than it was hair. Sounds like the only thing that lady gave you was the runaround, sir. That's true. Let's find her now. Classic Bo Ricks runaround. That's what was happening. Uh, we're going to go to uh, another time. We're going to, a couple years later. Okay, traveling through time. I don't know why it stands out to me the way it does. Like everything else I told about was like magical and majestic. Maybe like a priest touched you while it was on the TV, so it's sort of burnt into your brain. Nope. No, I don't think that's no, why. Wasn't it? Uh, somebody got burned. Oh, oh no. Yeah, but not just any place. They got burned in their eyeball. Ooh, that's I'm talking a bad about place to get burned in your eyeball. 1990. Are we talking about this Tuesday in Texas? I'm talking about. Jakey the Snakey oh, okay. Roberts okay. and Rick Martell and a little mm, thing called mm. arrogance. He got that arrogance sprayed in his eyeball. You and, were worried for Jake. No, not so much. I really liked that asshole French model with that spray thing just being like, I say, if it smells good, spray it. Mm-hmm, hush, mm-hmm. hush. That's, That's a, how we used to do the impersonation like. of the uh, arrogance. It's a weird thing for a young boy to like. I thought it was funny. I thought it was just edgy. <laughs> Super edgy. I like that Jake's eye went white because of it. Milky white. Yeah. I don't know. This is like uh, maybe one of my first forays into like being like you getting, pff, maybe you the bad guys. Arguments with your brothers back then when you're trying to tell them about how cool the French model with the bow tie was. No, there was no arguments. I just kind of ran roughshod over them. Oh, that's sad to hear. These guys really need to stand I'd up just be like, I, I say if it smells good, spray it. And then if they tried to argue back, I would do a thing called the double submission hold. Oh, these guys got a lot of pent-up rage where I would bubbling inside of them for I would so grab, many decades. I would grab one of them in a headlock. Oh, and no. then I would lock the other one between my legs and just squeeze the life out oh, of them. These days, one of them's gonna snap. until they were both just like writhing around, just snap and beat yeah. you to death with a hammer. And I'd just be like squeezing the shit out of both of them, yelling "Double submission hold! Double submission hold!" It's gonna be like your fortieth birthday or something. One of them's just gonna get blind rage. It's coming up. Oh, man. You got a number one? Yes, I do. My number one is where my wrestling fandom took a leap uh, i found out about the wwf that was the first step second step was finding out about wcw third step was i had to become a professional wrestler myself we haven't done that yet uh well turns out i had a foray i had an early foray you son of a bitch i thought we were friends in one of those pro wrestling illustrated magazines they had a reoccurring ad to join a pro wrestling league and me and my dude Anthony Kiss. Here's a here's a quick disclaimer on this. Uh-huh. Nathan Adams, you are one of my closest friends of all time. Okay. And I know that even if you won't admit it, I am yours. This Definitely f- wouldn't admit that. Yeah, I know you wouldn't. This is the first fucking time I'm hearing this story. Hot so story. I'm gonna listen to it with a little bit of excitement and a whole lot of hate. Hot story right off the presses here. So there's an ad. Join this wrestling league, and we're huh. super stoked. We're like, this is what we're gonna do. This is our big chance to become wrestlers. I'm sorry, you and who? Anthony Kiss. <laughs> We're going to form a tag team. Loser. What we do is we come up with names. We go, his mom, Linda, she takes us to the craft store. We get a bunch of shit to make gear. Uh, we got like, we're tearing up shirts like the Rockers and we're putting glitter glue on it. We come up with a gimmick. We invent the dynamic dudes before Shane and uh, Johnny Ace. One of us is calling ourselves... It's like when we invented Bath Time Time Machine before Bath Time uh-huh. Time Machine had. One of us is calling ourselves the Dangerous Dude. The other one's calling themselves the Dynamite Dude. We got this whole idea where we sign up the thing. We send it in to join. Uh, we got these glittery rockers-esque things we made. We got plans, I think, to ride like our bikes like off ramps when we're coming down the entrance or whatever. As a That's cool, just... like... If there's that's anything cool. that's going to pop the shit out of that's fucking a uh, cool. crowd full of people, it's a couple of five year old, yeah, white a kids. couple of six year olds on bikes Double. going off ramps. It's pretty cool. And then I guess the second part of our plan is to 
get in the ring and fist fight grown men? Like this was just and his mom was fully on board with this. Well, if you've seen WrestleMania 34, it's possible. So, yeah, uh, we were a little bit ahead of time on that, too. His mom apparently just fully on board. This takes us out to buy all the shit we need to go make these outfits. We make these outfits. I'd like to meet that mom and better. And then, uh, then big disappointment happens. It turns out we're fucking dumbass kids. This isn't a thing where you can just mail in a fucking thing, like... Pick your name and pick all the moves you're going to do, and then Wait, you join a wrestling down. league. It's just some sort of like stupid pen and paper Dungeons and Dragons role playing game or something. I'm sorry, what? And like it comes back to us like you had to sign up, like, oh, you check off, like you do this move and this move. Then like it gives you some sort of a, I don't know what it was. So it's like it was for it's, nerds. It's Dungeons and Dragons, but instead of it, it was taking place dumb. at one time in a basement, it takes place over weeks with correspondence. I don't even know what it ended up being. I just remember it being some sort of dumb game, and like we were just like, "What? It's just a fucking game? Like we had all of our tag team moves planned. We got these fucking sweet outfits with all this fringe going. Like, oh, this is some bullshit." So then we were so incredulous. That we didn't get to become pro wrestlers, that our parents are like, oh, you want to become wrestlers? Like, oh, we'll sign you up for wrestling for real. So we're like, oh, thank God, finally. Yeah. So then they signed us up for Junior Bulldogs Wrestling. We're on the wrestling team. You join up, they bring you in, they cut you into like six squads or something so they could have little little matches. This squad, this, this squad. We were on opposing teams. I was on the White Wave. I forget which team he got put That's on. That's a pretty cool name. And then I found out amateur wrestling and professional wrestling aren't the same thing. And amateur wrestling is boring. Really? They try to teach you all this dumb stuff. You got to start off on all fours, and then like the guy starts on top of you. I don't then... know. When I was in wrestling in high school, I had to wrestle a guy <sighs> with one leg like Zach Gawa. And then it's this dumb thing where you wrestle once for like 20 seconds, and then you just got to sit around the rest of the night while everybody else wrestles, and I hated it. Two weeks That's when in, you talk to staff I girls. fucking hated it, but you know you couldn't quit because your parents signed you money. You to... could have been the... To sign you up Chad for wrestling. Chad Gable or the Clark Gable, whatever his name is. And we were just talking about how boring it was, how dumb it was. You couldn't even, like, punch anybody or anything. It was all just these dumb little fucking sequences they were trying to teach us. But then the magic happened, my friend. I got chicken pox real fucking bad. Had to go to the hospital. Got to sit out three quarters of the entire season of uh, Junior Bulldogs you had to Wrestling. Go to the hospital for your Never had to pox? do it again. Turns out my mom put me in a bath full of Epsom salts to try and soothe my whatever, and all my skin fell off because you're not supposed to do that. What? Showed up at the hospital with, like, no skin, and, like, the uh, nurse was like, what'd you do to him? And she's like, oh, I put him in a bath. And the nurse was just like, you're not supposed to do that. And I was like, uh-oh. Really? So then, like, they had to give me, like, I an didn't IV. know about this either. It took me, like, 11 tries to get the IV in my arm because I was had so no dehydrated. Skin. And he and had no like, skin. Yeah, and then my friend Anthony, uh, like a couple Did days into this. Did you look like Freddy Krueger? He shows up to my hospital room with all my fucking homework. From I was like, I don't want my fucking homework. What are you doing to me, man? I almost somebody, died, bro. Somebody made him gather up all my homework and then bring it to me so I could do fucking homework while I was in the hospital. I had a Game Boy. I wasn't going to do my homework. <laughs> all right. Worst week of my life, probably. Listen up. Except for getting out of that wrestling, which sucked. And then I joined Taekwondo, which was awesome. That's real shit. Got up to Red Belt, kicked some ass in Taekwondo, my man. Listen up. That was at the YMCA. Listen up. It wasn't any school bullshit. Anthony, what's his nuts? Uh huh. I don't care where the fuck you are. I don't, think I don't he's care what the good. fuck you're doing. It's nothing I don't impressive. Care if you got a family and you got a job, you're doing it right for yourself. You drive a Buick. None of this stuff's I don't happening give, for you. Maybe the Buick. I don't give any of those fucks. You come down here right now. You come down here tomorrow. You come down here the day after that. You contact me when you come down here like two months it's from now. Having a rough you time find me. Here, actually. You find me. I'll fight you because you are not Nate's friend. I would never bring him homework. I bring him well wishes. Maybe once he gets done with the chemo, he'll fight you. And th- Maybe. I don't know. I don't know if he's going to be well enough. 
don't pull my dick. <laughs> Is the guy going to fight me or not? Yeah. We'll see. Now that it's out there in public, he's going to feel like a coward if he doesn't. Yeah, so that's on you, pal. I don't care what God did to you. I'm talking to you. See what God did to us, man. God gave us another episode of WCW we got to watch next week. It's you not did this to us, you minutes. fucking narcotics agent. It's not going to be 49 uh, minutes. That's the February 13th, 1988 edition of WCW. Uh, Join us they, here on Baby Oil and Blow. Do and, they fight uh, the woman yet? I sure hope so. Oh, God, I hope so. Only at baby oil and blow.